Generative AI video isn't just about making weird, unrealistic clips to post on the internet. In this video, I'll show you five practical, real-world ways to use generative AI video in your edits. If you're worried AI will replace video editors, I get it, but think of it as a tool that extends your creativity and opens up new workflows. So let me show you how to use it practically, not just for gimmicks. Starting with number one, impossible transitions. I have this drone shot on my timeline and I'll head over to the last frame and export a still frame. If you don't see this option, just head over to Final Cut Pro, Settings, and under Destinations, you can click on Add Destination and add the Save Current Frame option. With the last frame of my clip exported, I can head over to Envato, the sponsor of this video, and click on the plus icon to upload an image. I'll select the image I exported and upload that with the prompt, Camera moves swiftly down into the water, revealing an underwater kelp forest. You could click Generate straight away, but by clicking on this Enhance Prompt using AI button, you get a much more detailed prompt and as a result, much better video clips. This is what Envato generated. Now I can bring that clip into Final Cut Pro. You'll notice that the cut between the two clips is noticeable and not that seamless. This is where the practical application of knowing how to incorporate AI-generated footage into your edits comes in. First, I'll create a speed ramp by moving forward in time and hitting Shift B to make a speed cut. I'll speed this first portion up by eight times speed and adjust the speed handles like so. Also, Envato exports clips in 720p, so you'll want to upscale the clips using some kind of upscaler. I'll leave a link to a few options in the description down below. For this example, I'm using Fidelity Fuse, which works directly inside of Final Cut Pro. If I jump back and forth using the arrow keys, you can see that the color and exposure is different between the clips. So I want that to match a bit better. I'll add a color curves adjustment to the AI generated clip to bring down the exposure in the midtones a bit. And I'll also use the blue curve to remove some blue from the shot. Then I'll add a color wheels adjustment and drop the saturation. It doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to add a shake effect to make it feel more seamless. With my playhead somewhere over the first shot, I'll hit option A to add an adjustment clip. From the cut point, I'll hit the minus key and go back six frames and hit enter. Then I'll hit option and the left square bracket to trim the beginning of the clip. From the cut point here, I'll hit the plus key and type 12 and hit enter to move forward 12 frames. And then option and the right square bracket to trim the end of the clip. Then I'll add the earthquake effect. In the middle where the cut point is, I'll boost the amount quite high, maybe to around 30 and add a keyframe. Then I'll go to the beginning and the end and keyframe the amount to zero so that the amount of shake animates in and out. This is what that transition looks like. Number two, compositing elements. If you're looking for unique compositing elements or overlays and you can't find stock footage of what you're looking for, you can easily create your own. Using the prompts, a digital grunge overlay and fast moving light leak overlay, I was able to create these two clips. Let's take this grunge clip and add it on top of my footage by changing the blend mode to overlay and dropping the opacity to 75%, you can create a really cool looking overlay that enhances the mood of the scene. Or you can create a nice transition between the clips by changing the blend mode on the light leak clip and hitting Command R to open up the retiming editor to speed it up. Then using the shortcut Command T to add a cross dissolve to either side of the light leak and that creates a cool, unique transition between clips. You can even take it a step further, like in this example, where I prompted Envato to create a wasteland type shot of New York City 100 years from now. I then removed the sky on this shot using the magnetic mask, tracked the wasteland clip to the stock shot, made some color adjustments to it, and created this composite. Now, you might not be compositing doomsday shots every day, but hopefully this example just demonstrates the possibilities that generative AI opens up to us. By the way, one of the reasons I love using Envato is because they have everything. Stock footage, sound effects, music, motion graphics templates, and so much more. But they also have generative AI for images, video, music, voice, and all of these things fall under one subscription. One easy to use license for your videos and for your clients' videos. It's easily one of the most affordable tools out there for everything that's included. And right now they have unlimited video generation until the end of September. So if you want to try it out, check the link out down below. Moving on to number three, motion graphics for stylized effects. Maybe you need some kind of cool background to overlay a title on and you're not that good at motion graphics. You can enter a prompt like, 
animated AI blueprint motion graphics and enhance the prompt and then generate something cool like this. I'll trim about 12 frames off the beginning and the end so that I can duplicate the clip and create a loop by selecting the cut in the middle here and hitting Command T to create a cross dissolve. Maybe I'll add a Gaussian blur to the clip as well and I can adjust these parameters to my liking so that it's a little less blurry. I'll also add a color wheels adjustment to drop the highlights here, which will help the white text to stand out a bit more. I'll copy this first clip and with the second clip selected, I'll hit Command Shift V to paste these attributes, the effects from the first clip to the second clip. With my playhead at the beginning of a clip, I can hit Control T to add a basic title. I'll edit the text to whatever the title needs to be, adjust the font, size and spacing until I have a title that looks like this. I might even add a drop shadow to help the text stand out from our AI generated background even more. And as a final touch, I'll head over to my Pro Animate effects, which I'll link to down below, and I'll add the giant scale in effect. Now I have this dynamic looking title slide. Number four, tough to find B-roll. Let's say I head over to my favorite site for stock footage and I search for lightning strike over New York City at night. I go through a bunch of clips and I'm not finding what I'm looking for, but I really need the shot to set the scene in my edit. So I'll copy this text I searched for and head over to Generative AI, Video Gen and paste the text. I'll enhance the prompt and hit Generate. The result is a clip that will absolutely work in my project. Now let's talk about a workflow example that is really useful because the fifth and final practical way to use Generative AI video is for number five, storyboarding and shot planning. I've created a fake brand for this example, Spark, a sparkling water company. They have an idea for a video and want a storyboard from you. The idea is a tired commuter discovers a bottle of Spark sparkling water and with one sip, their world transforms from dull to vibrant, igniting a spark they share with friends. I created this storyboard using still frames from the clips I generated and using the clips, I was able to create a very rough idea of what the video could end up looking like. The great thing about using AI to do this is that the shots don't have to be perfect. I mean, you're not going to use these actual shots in the video in this example, but rather they can give you, the client, the DOP, or anyone else who needs it, a good visual representation of how you want the video to look. If you enjoyed this video on generative AI video, then you need to watch this one next for 10 AI tools that every content creator must have.